Today I'm going to show you the techniques that are used in the Spotify Wrapped 2023 designs. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. And just yesterday the Spotify Rap 2023s came out and obviously everyone's stories are full of their bragging about whatever artists they were listening to, uh, showing you how many minutes they listened to Spotify in the top 0.5% of what artists they were and stuff like that. All very exciting, but if you're a graphic designer like me, of course you're wondering how did they create this design because actually this design is my favorite so far. I really love these separate elements and in today's video I want to show you how to create designs like this. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so we are here in Adobe Photoshop and I also have a window open in Adobe Illustrator because some of these things have to be done in Illustrator and some of these things have to be done in Photoshop. So let's start out with the metallic lines over here. Uh, let's just start with the pen tool and I'm going to just draw out a similar shape here. I'm going to make sure that the lines are a little bit more like smooth, I guess. We're going to remove the fill here and under properties, we're going to scale up the stroke like this. Line could be smoother, but I just want to show you the principle of creating a metallic line like this. So instead of a solid color on our stroke, we'll change this to a gradient. And this should automatically open your gradient window here. But if not, you can find it under window gradient. We can either sample the colors from our existing design. I'm just going to show you what kind of colors they actually are. So the first one is a really, really light blue. It even shifts more towards like that purplish blue, I guess. This one. And in the middle, we'll do a very bright green. And then over here, we'll do a solid blue, something like this. This obviously doesn't look the same, however, but what we can do is change the stroke mode to here. And now we got the similar feel. Uh, we just need to click in here to flip on the colors. And now it's a matter of changing the position of the colors a little bit. As you can see the blue and the green are a little bit less like in there. Particularly the blue is actually really small, so We'll just change these colors so that it fits a little bit better. There we go. All right, so next we'll do this shape here. It's actually really easy. We're just gonna grab an ellipse and we're gonna change this over to a fill. We're gonna change this to a radial gradient. And I'm just gonna remove these points here. I'm gonna change the outer end to a purple and the middle here to a like neon green yellowish color, similar to my logo actually, but then just slightly more towards green. And then in the middle, we'll add a red color. Now let's grab the gradient tool. And we'll change this into an ellipse like this. Now it's a matter of changing the colors around a little bit. And the fade between red and green is actually pretty harsh. So we'll move these colors a little bit closer together. And something like this should do the trick, but now obviously this still needs those spikes. We're achieving those spikes with the plucker and bloat filter. So we'll go to effect, distort and transform, plucker and bloat. And once we start clicking towards plucker, it's actually the effect that we're looking for. Minus 75% should do the trick. And obviously we need more spikes. So the way we can do that is go to object, path, at anchor points and we'll do that one more time and now it's a matter of changing the values here because obviously like in the example colors are changed up a little bit so we'll move these around on the gradient and then there's that and we can always change the shape of our gradient of course something like this is fine and then we'll just rotate everything and put it up in the corner maybe we'll just make the plucker and load slightly less drastic and we can do that by going to appearance if we cannot find this button let's just go to window appearance over here and we'll click on plucker and load and we'll decrease that to maybe minus 60 or something like that there we are so the next one is actually fairly easy this can be done in Photoshop and in Illustrator but for the sake of this tutorial let's just move over to Photoshop for a second we'll just copy these guys and paste them. So we'll grab the rectangle selection tool and we'll select a square over here and we'll go to this button right at the bottom and we'll click on gradient and let's start out with a cloud one here because it looks kind of similar and we'll just grab a very light blue and a slightly darker shade of blue. All right we'll change the style to reflect it and we'll change the angle like that and if we scale it down just a notch that should already do it. And we'll place this behind our smart object. And the final one is the flower over here. And 
honestly, you can do this any way you want. You can either grab a vector flower. You can also draw one yourself because this is kind of irregular. So what I would do in this case is either draw one on paper or draw one with my uh, drawing tablet. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you real quick how to do a flower in Illustrator. It's actually very similar to this shape right over here. We'll grab an ellipse. We'll just fill it up like regularly. And I'll just apply the plucker and bloat again. But this time we'll do positive like 65% or something like that. And again, you can add some anchor points. And as you can see, this looks a little bit too perfect still. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my drawing tablet. But just so you know, if you do not have a drawing tablet, you can always use this method that I just showed you. So before we move on to the next part of this tutorial, I just wanted to let you know that you can get the PSD files and the Illustrator files from this video if you become a Patreon member of mine. That means that you don't have to go through all of the hassle of following this tutorial and you just have the files in one go and you can use it for your own projects. If you don't know, I create tutorials on a weekly basis and I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for the support of my patrons. So saying that, I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members because if it weren't for you, there wouldn't be Dreadlabs. As a thank you for becoming a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials and you can use them in your own projects. You'll also get a 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell texture packs, mockups, vector icons and more. On top of that, you'll also get an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server where we share our work, ask for feedback, answer questions, and do a lot more. There's also a higher tier that gives you access to exclusive tutorials, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make a death metal logo from scratch, beginner tutorials for Adobe Illustrator, and more. Of course, I understand, especially in these times, that people don't have a lot to spare. And if being a Patreon member is too expensive for you, you can just become a member for one month, get access to all of the files that I just mentioned, and then cancel your subscription. That does mean, however, that you will miss out on any future PSD files, of course. Alternatively, if you really don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs, but you do want to help out, leaving a like and a comment on this video really does help. Because since you guys started doing that more often, my channel started growing a lot. I would also consider subscribing to the channel because there's new video tutorials coming every single week. Sometimes you think you already subscribed to the channel, but you might have not yet. So once again, a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members and let's continue back to the video. All right, so we're back in Photoshop. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna grab a brush and I'm just gonna make sure that the hardness is set to 100%. I think a 40% width is enough. But we'll see. I might want to change this, but and then we're gonna just draw a really, really ugly flower. As you can see, this is nowhere near perfect, but it just shows you that you can do this like irregularly. Also, it doesn't really matter yet what color you're designing this in, as you can see. So I want to give this a color overlay to black. I'm gonna make a new layer, drop it behind our flower, and we'll go to edit, fill white I'm just gonna hide the rest of my layers for now so the next thing i'm gonna do is turn my drawing into a smart object by right clicking on the layer and then click on convert to smart object and i'm gonna go to filter pixelate mosaic i think a cell size of 20 should do the trick looking at this maybe a little bit smaller we'll do let's do 16. next i'm gonna go to my adjustments and i'm gonna click on threshold and as you can see we already are getting that pixely flower thing uh, but the more we slide it to the left the thinner our lines will be and the lower it is i think this looks a little bit more similar i guess so next i want to go to my layer menu i'm going to select the threshold the flower drawing and the white background layer and we'll group this together and we'll double click on the group and in this bar here where it says current layer let's just move this white slider to the left and i will right click convert to smart object again and now we can just give this a color overlay with a nice yellowish green color something like this i guess so looking at board number two there's actually only one method that i need to explain because the lines are basically the same as this one the pixely line is basically the same as the flower and this flower here works the same as this one the only thing there is that if you look at this flower it's actually like these shapes so that it's like a kind of an infinity logo they're paced like behind each other to make it look like a flower so i'm just going to explain this one here so in number two I'm just gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna press D on my keyboard to make sure that my foreground and background color are set to black and white. I will go to filter, render, clouds. Next, I'm gonna go to filter again, distort, wave. I'm gonna make sure that the scale of the horizontal ones is set to zero. So we'll only have vertical waves in here. I'm gonna make the wavelengths a little bit smaller and I'm gonna really crank up the amplitude here. And the more generators we have, the more randomized it is. Something like this should do the trick, I think. All right, I'm gonna go back a little bit uh, and I'm gonna make sure that there's a little bit less wave generated. 
I'm going to make sure that there's actually less generator. So we'll turn that back to five and we'll make the wavelength a little bit larger like this. If you have something like this, that should be good. So the next thing I want to do is actually mask this part out because if you don't know, if you do a filter like this, it actually covers like all of the artboards and we don't really need that. We only need one for this. So I'm going to just click on control A on my keyboard and I'm going to click on the mask button here and right click and apply layer mask. So now if we move this around, this is basically the only pixels that we can see in this layer. Next, I want to create an adjustment layer, the gradient map actually. And in the gradient map, we'll just click on the first color. We'll make a nice mint color. So between green and cyan actually, somewhere like this. And we'll do a slight subtle light blue in here as well. I think this should do it. Maybe make the cyan a little bit lighter. All right, so the next thing is we need to make sure that this is deformed like this. So I'm going to right click, convert to smart object. This thing, and I'm going to scale this thing up so that we have kind of like a wave thing going on here, somewhere here. It also needs a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to press control M on my keyboard to open up the curves menu. I'm going to drag in this slider and this slider a little bit. Next, we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this is to remove some of the detail because it needs to be a little bit smoother. And now under filter liquify, we should be able to bend this a little bit more towards where we want it to, like this. We'll add one more curves, we'll increase the contrast even further like this. And let's move around to see where, what kind of shape we actually like. And I do like this where this is happening. Uh, we can achieve this a little bit more with the liquify tool. So if you want more of these swirls and stuff, what you can do is notch all of these in the right direction, but there's also the twirl clockwise tool. So if we make this a little bit larger, you can see that this is actually like really creating these weird wavy vibes. It's actually quite drastic. So I'm just gonna lower the rate, the density and the pressure. Like this. And now I think this part here is actually working a little bit better. If you don't like the way that this is behaving, what you can also do of course is change the black and white values in the curves here. This method does require a little bit of experimenting as you can see. If you want to learn more about this, I do have a tutorial about this on my channel. Actually, I like this, but the contrast is a little bit much. So then of course, there's one more thing we can do about that. And that's go into the gradient map and make a little bit more of a smooth transition. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to sample the color right here. As you can see, this works a little bit better already, but there's still a little bit too much contrast. So I'm going to back to my abstract layer, press Ctrl M on my keyboard once again. And as you can see, if this is happening, you see the graph here. That means that there's not a lot of color data and the all whites and the all black. So what we can do about that is just drag both of these a little bit more toward each other. Like this. And finally, Let's just go like this and we'll mask this guy. Clip the gradient map to our rectangle. And now we can just move this to the bottom here. Looking at it, this might need a little bit of color adjustments, maybe a little bit more blue in there, maybe a little bit more uh, of that darker green. So something like this looks a little bit better, I think. Yeah, this looks a lot better already. All right, finally, what we're gonna be doing is create this one here. And that's actually it's actually a very similar process to this one. The thing is that this one can be a little bit manipulated. So let's go into our last artboard here, make a new layer. We'll just press control A. So we'll make a selection of our entire canvas and we'll go to gradient. We'll create a radial gradient from black to white. So we'll grab the basic gradient like this. And actually let's scale this guy down just a little bit. So the circle is entirely visible. Next, I want to rasterize this layer. So go right click, rasterize layer. All right, so let's just delete the layer mask here. We'll press control A to select everything. We'll mask the gradient fill and we'll click on apply mask one more time. And now we have the separate layer. So let's just press Ctrl or Command T on our keyboard to transform this and we'll hold shift to kind of like create this more oval shaped gradient. And we don't need that much white here. So we can just delete this off our layer like this. And now I just want to go to our adjustments and we'll add another gradient map to this. Before you actually enter your gradient map, delete the layer mask. Now we'll click on the gradient. 
and we'll click on the black here, which is in our picture in the middle. And we'll click this orange. Next, I want to make a new color and we'll click on the yellow here. Then we can just copy this orange. So we'll click once on the orange and then we'll just click here again. I will click once more. This will add another yellow color, but we actually need the like, lavender color here. And then we'll just click one more time. And now we'll sample the green. And finally, with the white selected, we'll just sample a darker lavender color like this. Now it's a matter of spacing out the colors a little bit here. In our case, it's maybe a little bit too small. So what I want to do is hold Control or Command on my keyboard and click on the layer thumbnail here. And we'll make a selection of our rectangle. We'll select both of these layers and group them. And then we'll click on the mask here. And now what we can do is we can just scale up the rectangle like this. So that it looks a little bit more similar to our example here. So a couple of ways to like kind of randomize this a little bit more. Uh, let's just turn this into a smart object first. So we'll right click and click on convert to smart object. Next we'll go to distort, wave, and essentially we'll do the same thing as we did before, but we'll just scale down the amplitude like only to like a couple of percent. And we'll make the wavelength like really large. This just deforms everything a little bit, as you can see in a preview window. Another thing you can do is go to filter, Blur Gallery, Field Blur. And this actually adds Gaussian blurs wherever you put a pin, but then you can just change how much of a blur you want at a certain pin. So now everything is blurred by 15 pixels, but if I put a point in here and I make this larger, there's more blur in here, as you can see. Now we'll just click OK. And finally, let's just move this group upwards a little bit like this. And now it's time for the final one. And I'm actually going to grab the solid brush again. And you want to kind of draw out the shape of this drip. I'm just going to do something similar. I want to make sure that everything is filled in. So you don't want to have just the outline. You want to do it like this. And we'll do the small ones as well. All right. So this all comes down to layer styles. The first thing you want to do is go to fill. And we'll turn the fill down to zero. This makes our drip invisible. But that's actually okay because the difference between opacity and fill is that with fill, you can still add layer styles. So we'll go here and we'll add a bevel and emboss. I'm gonna reset this to default so you can follow along up the size a little bit. We'll change the glass contour to ring. We'll change the shadow mode to the color of our background here. And we'll up the opacity a little bit. And the highlight mode will change that to the green here. And we'll change the blend mode to normal. And we'll lower the opacity slightly to around 80%, I guess. Now it's a matter of changing the direction here. And there you have it. So guys, I hope this gave you an idea on what process it took to design the elements of the Spotify Rep 2023 stories. It was actually quite fun for me to explore and see how this was made. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you do want to get the project files for this, so the Illustrator and the PSD files that I used in this video, as well as all of the other project files from all of my tutorials, you can become a Patreon member of mine. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.